Hey guys, it's Danny. Today's video is actually not very planned. You see, I started to do the series of videos. I suppose it will be a series because I blabbed a lot. So the series of videos on my discus tank. And being that discus fish are quite a special fish and sadly quite a divisive fish within the community, um, I do want to elaborate a little bit on the setup and on the experience that I've had with my discus so far. I didn't plan to do the discus tank so early, I wanted to wait at least six months to have more experience and more things to share, but I think we're gonna move house in a few months. I'm not entirely sure when and yeah, I'm gonna have to tear down the tank and redo it. So it's a good opportunity now to explain how I thought about the tank and how it's going, pros and cons, all of that fun stuff. But there is a section of the video in which I talk about tank sizes in general and yeah, I have some things to say and I think it's important to start with that, I guess, because I really want to share with you how I think about aquariums, tank size and all of those things. Because if you think that tank size is a new matter that people like to pick on uh, you for on the internet, no, it's not. It's not a new matter. 20 years ago when I was on forums, uh, it was the same thing. I don't think it will ever change. We're gonna have some people who are very, very adamant about certain numbers and certain tank sizes and measurements and all of those things. My opinion is very, very different being that I did work in a um, aquarium shop and I worked with different sizes of aquariums. I have a very strong visual of what those measurements mean since that experience. I know how a 500 liter tank looks like, 700 liters, one ton, and so on. And being that I have that experience, I have a very, very different view on tank size and what it actually matters, what it actually affects. Because I have a funny suspicion that like most of us, if we don't have access to various tank sizes, it's hard to visualize those measurements that we say or we type. And that's where all problems <laughs> pretty much start from. So today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how I stand on aquariums, what they mean to me, what is ideal, if there is such a thing as an ideal, and yeah, address a little bit this... I would call it not so healthy side of the aquarium hobby and it's something we all have to deal with. I've seen a lot of videos from much much more popular growers than I am. I've seen those comments, nobody escapes them. So I'm gonna kick off the discus series with this video just to explain to you how I stand on things and if you don't stand or have the same opinions as me that is absolutely fine but trust me there are a million opinions on this in the hobby and that's fine to a point I would say when you start to pick on people I, I don't think it's fine anymore. Of course we're talking about reasonable things here uh, but just so you understand how I feel about things after quite a lot of experience with aquariums and tanks and all of that for quite a lot of years seeing a lot of sizes seeing a lot of different types of aquariums I would just like to share with you how I stand on things just so you understand I guess better my choices and so on and so forth right so with that said let's start with the video it's gonna start a bit abruptly but that's just because it's a segment of a much bigger video like an hour long video alrighty tank size I think honestly that is the most ridiculous thing to get hung up with when we're talking about a level of um, fish keeping let's say that is not beginner if you see a beginner having you know the goldfish in the five liter tank yeah sure hey that's not okay. You should not do that. You know, fish need bigger spaces. They grow bigger than that. And I, you know, absolutely perfectly agree. But we're getting to a point where it's becoming an obsessive, unhealthy, unreasonable, and, and just absolutely unnecessary thing we should cling to. And I'm just gonna say a few comments that I get. Uh, for discus, one ton is ideal, really. Have you ever seen a one ton tank? I have. I actually have been working with one many years ago and when I tell you that a fish can do the whole length of a tank, of one ton tank, that sounds like a tongue twister. It takes a few seconds for the fish to go from one side to the other. A few seconds, five seconds if he's in a hurry. Does that sound ideal to you? because it sure does not sound ideal to me. I'll be absolutely honest, this is where I stand with aquariums. Nothing is ideal. What's ideal about a glass box? It's not. Is it good enough? Yeah, it can be. It can be good enough. 
is it as ideal as the river or lakes these fish or the ancestors are coming from? No, it's not. A fish can go and travel if he desires. Where can he go and travel here? Not this tank. 500 liters, 800 liters, whatever all of these people who like to throw out numbers like to throw out. Where does he go? Where does he travel? What does he see? How long does it take to get there? Three seconds, four seconds, ten. Is that ideal? Does that start to sound like ideal conditions? I don't, for me it doesn't. Nothing we do in our humble apartments and houses and stuff, nothing is ideal. I don't think even aquariums for some of their fish have ideal conditions. I really, really don't. I will never say it's ideal. I don't like to think about things as ideal. I like to think about them as good enough. How do we measure this good enough? Well, how I measure it is, I guess two things, the health of the fish and the, or in the health, let's say, I will integrate uh, how exuberant the fish is. Is he active? Is he curious? Does he go and check his surroundings? Is he going and checking out the caves that I might offer? Does he get very excited when I come to feed him and spend time with him and so on? Especially for betas. You know, for fish that are that type of fish, that's one thing that might help me, hey, he's happy, he's doing okay, right? He's not sad in a corner. And second, longevity of his life. It is a very well-known fact that in the aquarium hobby, fish tend to live longer than they would in their natural habitats. And there are many reasons for that, but some of the reasons include no natural predators here because we're not gonna put fish that hunt each other. I hope we're not. And second, disease. We tend to take care of the waters that uh, we provide for our fish. So we take care of the water, we take care that the food we give is good, doesn't have parasites. If we have issues, we treat the fish and so on. So it makes sense that the fish lives longer. Um, it's not always the case that a fish that lives a long life is a happy life, absolutely not. There are some fish that can handle a lot of, of adversity, but here's where the other like behavioral part comes in, right? So if my fish looks active, looks happy and lives a long life, it, it doesn't get sick as well. That's, that's a factor as well. Sometimes fish get sick, but most of the times they shouldn't continuously get sick, right? So this is how I measure the good enough level. If I maintain good enough like that and I see my fish are not, you know, sitting in one, one corner being unhappy with their life, you know, that for me is okay, it's good enough. Not ideal, but do I need to provide ideal? Because the only way I can provide ideal is by providing the lake and I can't. I don't know how many of you can provide lakes and rivers to your fish. Maybe some of you can. I can't. So for me, it has to be good enough. So when I see people getting hung up on, oh, you're missing 10 gallons and if you had 10 more gallons, it would be perfect. The funniest thing that I've seen, it was on a channel, gosh, I forgot the name. I'll find it and I'll uh, put it in the description. Um, it was a fish grower that had discus fish and he, I think he's growing in a 750 liter tank. He has a, um, more discus than I do. And he was complaining in a video about how many people say that, mm, your tank looks a little too small for the discus. It's, and it was 750 liters. And then George Farmer, another aquascaper and fish keeper that I know and admire for 15, 20 years at this point as well. Oh yeah, I always get comments saying my 500 liter is tiny. It's, it's a nano discus tank, you know, for my discus. And all of these people are commenting based on what they see on the video. They don't know necessarily the volume of the tank because we're not always telling, hey, by the way, this is, just so you know, this is the volume of my tank, just so, just so you know. We're not always gonna say that because it really doesn't matter all that much. So me with my 240 here, I should be buried alive, but I'm not because five centimeters here, five here, five here, five, five in the back. You do the math and you're gonna get I guess more than 100 liters, I think. Anyway, there you go. Hey presto, if I put five centimeters here, there and there, suddenly everybody is accepting of my tank. Can you visualize what five centimeters will do for a discus fish? Which discus fish are already like 12 centimeters, 13. Like my biggest one is 13 centimeters, I think, at this point. You know what five centimeters in the sense of more space gives to the fish? It's this. And up and then to the side 
That's the amount of space it gives the fish because the fish is already 12 centimeters. If I give him five more here, it's gonna be like, hmm. So much more space for activities. No. Yes, these tiny measurements increase the volume. What does this mean? If you have a bigger volume of water, all of the chemical elements are more diluted. Yes, the water chemistry is affected. The well-being of the fish, there is a point where it's not, it doesn't matter anymore where, when you add 20 more gallons to your tank. After a point, it doesn't matter. When you have a 10 gallon tank, adding 20 gallons matters. When you have a 60 gallon tank, adding 10 more gallons does not matter all that much for the fish inside. It's like, that's all they do in the space you provide. That, that, that's the, the whole benefit of adding 10 more gallons or more gallons than that, 100 liters. That's all you give them. What you do is you dilute whatever is in that water, absolutely. But if there isn't much to dilute or there isn't no need to dilute anything, why do we get so hung up? And especially hung up on people that you don't know much about, you don't know much about their aquariums, you don't know the volume of their aquarium, you don't know like how it works. As you noticed here, everything that I talked about today works with me and with them and with the aquarium and produces a certain result. When you don't know these things and you just see a person, you don't know how big, tall, wide the person you see is, camera angles play a role as well. You see a person in front of a tank and you're like, oh, that tank is so small. It looks so small. It's a, almost a one ton tank. I thought one ton was okay. Why is it suddenly not okay anymore? Because you visually feel it's not okay. I'll tell you why. It's because of those darn five centimeters, which don't mean anything. You put them in, already you increase the tank with a hundred liters. Oh, a hundred liters. No, it's just this. That's all the fish does, nothing more. And it's so insignificant, you're not even able to tell as a person seeing the tank on camera. You cannot detect those 10 centimeters that that tank has more over another tank. You still feel it's tiny because maybe those 10 centimeters are not even in length, they're in width or height, but you don't, you don't, you don't perceive it because the fish are already big. So adding half of their length here, half of their length here, up, down, doesn't really make as much of an impact as you would imagine it does. So my TED talk is over here. <laughs> I hate when people like get hung up on these things, especially when, as I was saying, I had a one ton tank in front of me. Few, five seconds it took for that fish to go from one side to the other. When, when it was feeding time, he was doing this in one ton. It's not ideal, it's not, sadly. I wish I could give lakes to these fish or, I don't know, a small river, but I can't. So what I think we should aim for is good enough and maintaining the water quality. First and foremost, forget about uh, anything else. Water quality, water chemistry, water parameters. That's all that matters. Enough decent space for the fish to swim and turn around and swan, absolutely. And then just observe your fish. If it's getting sick all the time and he's gasping for air at the surface, there's something wrong. He can do that in one ton as well, as well as into 40. So those are the more important things for me, not like five centimeters here or there. Such a, a tiny detail that really is so insignificant if you know how to play like with the water chemistry that is just unnecessary. So from now on, I think I'm gonna take this approach on my um, channel and just not talk about the size, talk about the water chemistry, talk about what hurts, talk about the parameters because that's where the issue lies. Alrighty, so that is about it for today. I'm hoping I can make this a cohesive video but yeah, next week I'm gonna start with a much more broken down version of how I set up my discus tank but for today that is about it. This is how I stand on sizes and so on and so forth uh, and I hope this gives a glimpse into how I visualize things and how I do things. Of course we all dream of having bigger and bigger aquariums because yes they do give us more opportunity for more fish and more things to do but we have to be also realistic which is something many people just forget this realistic approach is very different for all of us just really doesn't mean that it's so easy for other people to have 
um, voluminous tank in their size, especially people who live in apartments and higher floors. I've been there all my life. I've live, lived in a high floor apartment and I could not have what I wanted. So with that said, uh, we have to always, always be realistic and Keep in mind that what is our reality might not be the reality for other people. Right. So with that said, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next week when we're going to kick off the Discus series. And at some point I will document the move as well because it's, it's going to be very exciting but stressful at the same time. And I'm very, very stressed about the Discus fish because they're skittish fish. Oh my gosh, they're not like badass. What did I get myself into? I don't know, but I love them. Okay, so with that said, I'll see you guys next time. Bye!